Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hand of Melania, and specifically the Hand of Melania in PvP. If you didn't know, since the patch 1.1, the Hand of Melania and all Power Stance Katanas are quite good in PvP. Their moveset is extremely read heavy and does take some skill to use. However, Hand of Melania has much higher damage than the other katanas and the weapon art actually combos into itself. You can hit the first part of the weapon art and go combo into the end of the weapon art. This means that you can potentially one-shot players who aren't careful. Of course, you can two-shot or three-shot players anyway with the power stance moveset, which is what I based this build around. Because the power stance katana moveset is definitely a meta moveset since patch 1.1, in which that'll stagger every attack, and the crouching attack especially is going to be the main focus of your playstyle. However, you do have the jumping attacks, which are quite good as well, and the running R2. Not as good as using a crouch attack or a jumping attack, but it still has some use. Hannah Melania is a little bit shorter than Nagakiba, however it does have more damage. Nagakiba is better, but I am very much focusing on the weapon art aspect of this because yes it does a lot of damage. The weapon art is what it makes it really good. Well, really good in terms of fighting arena randoms who can't reaction roll it. Now for my build. Of course we have 60 vigor because that is the vigor soft cap. We have 18 endurance to equip the heaviest armor we can with the most damage negation. 16 strength is just to use the hand of Melania one hand. And we have 75 dexterity boosted to 80 with the Millicent's prosthesis. And that is the final dexterity soft cap. Of course, we're using dual hand of Melania's. For the armor, we have Exile Hood, Beast Champion Altered Armor, Battle Mage Gauntlets, and Black Knight Greaves. And since poise isn't terribly relevant since patch 1.1, we are focusing on damage negation. So this has the highest damage negation for the weight that I can equip. We do have 53 poise to tank one carry and slicer. For talismans, we have the Crimson Amber Medallion boosting our HP. Earthtree's Favor boosting our HP, stamina, and equip load. Milson's Prosthesis boosting our dexterity as well as our multi-head attack damage. And Rotten Wing Sword Insignia is also boosting your multi head attack damage. For the Great Rune, we have Morgoth's Great Rune to give us even more HP and increase our survivability. For the Crystal Tiers, we have the Crimson Bubble Tier and the Opliant Heart Tier. The Crimson Bubble Tier is going to restore 30% of our HP when we're below 20%. The Opliant Heart Tier is going to increase our damage negation even further. Focusing on survivability is very important in PvP. However, you can't sacrifice damage for it too much. You can, in some instances, sacrifice damage for survivability or being able to dodge, such as a light roll pike build, which was the meta for quite a while. Pikes are still the best setup, specifically dual pikes. However, since you can stun on one, light rolling isn't terrible, but I would rather stack damage negation because that is very important. If anything, everything can start in one, you can get a lot of pseudo combos in, 